good evening, Mansfield Pentecostal Church, and uh, good evening to all of you who are visiting here tonight on our online Bible study. Um, I hope you're going to have a good time tonight. As you know, uh, on our Tuesday nights, we normally have a Bible study uh, every week uh, at, at Empire Street. Uh, but obviously, because of the restrictions, we're going online. And as part of this Bible study, it's a bit shorter than what we used to have it before because it's, uh, it's going online. But as part of the study, we have a thought to think about, uh, a question to ponder, and a text to study. And I want to encourage you, if you are part of a life group in the church, um, and then, you know, I, I'd like you to meet up with someone in your life group, get a coffee, get a socially distanced coffee or tea with someone. And, uh, you know, there's a question to ponder, there's a question to consider. I want you to discuss that question in your groups, in your small groups, and it takes a study. Maybe take a passage of scripture, just study it together, and uh, talk about it amongst yourselves. You know, this is about, these times of, of study are actually about, you going away thinking about what I'm bringing to you and then actually thinking about how this has affected your life and discussing it with other uh, brothers and sisters in Christ in the church and th thinking about how can I live this out and how does this affect my uh, everyday living. Well, you remember uh, that last uh, Tuesday night we were introducing the topic of angels and demons. And you remember that we said that behind the natural world, behind the world that we see with our physical senses, we sense with our five senses, there lies an unseen spiritual world. That unseen spiritual world is just as real as the natural world that we live in. And as part of this world, there are persons, okay? Uh, now, some persons, or many persons, I should say, are working for God and working for His purposes on earth. We call those angels. There are other beings, other persons, who are actually working against God, and that sometimes we call them demons or unclean spirits. And we said last uh, last Tuesday night that we said that an angel uh, or spirit is a spiritual being that is capable of making moral judgments, has high intelligence, but they do not have bodies. So unlike us, we have bodies, but angels do not have bodies. Now this session, with the time that we have, I want us to look at four questions. The first question is going to be, how many angels are there? Okay. The second question is, what types of angels are there? The third question we're going to look at is, do angels have any limitations? And the third, fourth question is, do we have guardian angels. Well, let's look at that first question. How many angels are there? Well, you know what? The Bible seems to indicate, doesn't, doesn't give us a specific number of angels, but the Bible very clearly shows us that there are a lot of angels, okay? There are a lot of them, okay? Uh, when God speaks of, of um, himself or the, the, the prophets uh, speak of God coming on Mount Sinai, we read that he came with myriads of holy ones from the south. And that in the book of Psalms, that the chariots of God are tens of thousands and thousands upon thousands, and the Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. So the idea of thousands upon thousands of these heavenly beings and hosts is very clear and evident in Scripture. The writer of the book of Hebrews uh, said this in terms of the number of angels. He said that there are, th he said that I look, sorry, he, there are thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. And in his vision, when John uh, had a picture of heaven, he said this, I looked and I heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. So all this goes to show that actually the number of angels that there, that are, there are are probably innumerable for us to count. There are, there are that many that God created. What I find interesting is that uh, throughout the scriptures, um, the Bible often talks about the hosts of heavens or the host of the heavens. And it often makes a comparison between the host of the heavens and the stars of the heavens. Now, I don't know how strong or how much warrant we could put in this, but it would seem to suggest that given that we know that there are 
countless number of st numbers of stars in the heavens uh, when we look in, in, in the space and astronomers have still been trying to count how many stars are we can only estimate how many they are I sometimes wonder if there are a countless number of heavenly hosts of angels uh, in in the heavenlies and so clearly there are a lot of angels but this then brings us to the second question what types of angels are there you know the bible is very clear that there are different orders of angels for example there are cherubim you know in the first part of the book of genesis we read that there are angelic beings called cherubim who guarded the way into the garden so when adam and eve were kicked out of the garden they couldn't go back in because the cherubim we're guarding. And then what's really interesting that throughout the rest of the Bible we see the cherubim making a reappearance. We see that the Bible often says that the Lord is seated and thrown between the cherubim. It seems like the cherubim are the guardian angels into the very throne room of God. We also have the imagery when uh, God commanded old Moses to make the Ark of the Covenant, that out of, out of the Ark of the Covenant there was like a, a golden lid called the Atonement Cover, and inscribed above the golden lid, the Atonement Cover, where the, the cherubim angels, where their wings would cover the Atonement, and the glory of God would be manifest above the wings of the cherubim in the Holy of Holies. And so cherubim clearly are angels who uh, God or almost the gatekeepers into the very presence of God. Then we have other types of angels called seraphim. As far as I understand, the, the name seraphim means the burning ones, but actually the seraphim are constantly worshipping the Lord. In fact, Isaiah, when he had a vision uh, of the glory of God and the temple of God, he saw the seraphim angels worshipping God. They had two wings over the face, two wings beneath their feet, two wings they were flying with. And Isaiah says this, that they were constantly worshipping God, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. So there's the cherubim, there's the seraphim, and then the prophet Ezekiel and even John himself also had a vision of the living creatures. And these were angelic beings that had uh, the appearance of a man, of, an, of, a, of a lion, of an ox, of an eagle, and they were constantly in the presence of God worshipping God. Now all this goes to show something, a common thread and feature about angels. Angels seem to love worshipping the Lord. Uh, they seem to be constantly in the, enamored by the presence and the glory of God, worshipping him for who he is. Angels also clearly have certain names attributed to them and also have ranks uh, of order, almost as if in a, in a military force. One angel by the name of Michael is an archangel and Michael seems to have responsibility or ha over the nation and the people of Israel. Then there's another angel by the name of Gabriel and uh, Gabriel on two occasions brought a message about the coming of the Messiah. Uh, the first time he appeared before Daniel and Gabriel gave Daniel a time frame as to when the Messiah would come. And then later on in the Bible we see that Gabriel came before Mary and and pronounced to her the birth of the Messiah Jesus. And so very clearly certain angels have names and they are assigned certain functions. But other than the fact that there are many angels, there are different types of angels with certain names, this brings us to the third question. Do angels have limitations? You will remember that angels are created beings. They are not uncreated like God, okay? So they are created beings. They're like, they're like us. And given that angels are created beings, that means they also have limitations. Now, we saw uh, last week, and I touched on it again tonight, that angels are incredibly intelligent and powerful beings, powerful creatures. But even so, they are limited in their intelligence and power compared to God. Angels cannot be everywhere at the same time. Only God has that attribute. We, we often call that omnipresence. God is everywhere all the time. But angels can only be at one place at any given moment of time. The Bible clearly describes that angels are able to travel from one place 
to another. Uh, you know, the other day uh, I was having a bit of a group chat with uh, some of the guys in our Zoom coffee morning and we were talking. If you had to travel from one place to another, would you rather fly there or would you like to go up there by uh, teleportation, like, you know, like in Star Trek? And we had a bit of a fun conversation about that. You know, I don't know whether angels can teleport themselves from one place to another or they can travel at very fast speeds. I, I don't know. But what I do know is that they are created beings and they can only be at one place at one time at any given moment. For example, Luke declares of Gabriel that he was sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth. And so very clearly they have the limitations. In fact, in the book of Daniel, Daniel says that God sent a messenger to him, an angel to him. And uh, that messenger uh, needed the support of another angel by the name of Michael to help him fight against the spiritual power of the prince of Persia so that the messenger could deliver the message to Daniel. So there's a lot that's going on in the heavenlies. There's a lot going in the, on in the spiritual world that we're not aware of. But angels play a key role in that and clearly although they are powerful although they they're able to travel at very fast speeds they also have their limitations but this this then brings us to our final question and that is this do we have guardian angels well it's very clear that God does send his angels to protect his saints and to protect and watch over his people you know there's a famous story in the Bible where King Herod arrested Peter and he locked him up inside a cell and the Bible says there are four squads of four soldiers guarding him and so he's under maximum security and he was he was chained to a, to a wall and you know the amazing thing is that the church was praying for Peter the church was praying that the Lord would deliver uh, Peter well, somehow in the middle of the night, uh, Luke records in, in Acts that the, the cell that Peter was in lit up. OK, an angel appeared. The chains fell off his, uh, his hands. And I think the guards were asleep or whatever. And the angel literally led, rescued Peter out of the out of the cell. And as he was going out of the courtyard, uh, the, you know, the Bible says the gate opened for itself. And the angel led Peter out, out into the open. And Peter thought he was hallucinating. He thought he was having a dream or whatever. And the next minute, the, the angel disappears. And uh, Peter thought, realized he wasn't dreaming. It was for real. And so Peter immediately goes to the house where the church was praying for him. He knocks on the door. A servant girl by the name of Rhoda goes to the door, notices it's Peter, is so excited that Peter has been delivered that she goes back to the, to the church where they're praying for Peter. And uh, Rhoda says, hey, Peter's at the door. And then listen to the response, because this is really important, of what the believers say to the servant girl Rhoda. They say to her, they, they say to her, you're out of your mind. It must be his angel. Well, I find that interesting because it would seem to suggest that there was a belief in the early church, at least, that certain angels were assigned to certain people. Now, I am not entirely sure whether this gives us sufficient warrant to believe that we all have a guardian angel or that God assigns a specific angel to a specific per person. But the Bible clearly does show us that God does send his angels to protect. The Bible says that for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They'll lift you up in their hands so that you'll not fall, uh, stri strike your foot against a stone. And also that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. You remember uh, last week I shared to you a story of a pastor relayed to me of a young lady who was rescued by an angel. Well, God clearly has sent his angels to deliver us. I think of two stories I know of people personally who experienced an angelic deliverance and salvation. Uh, and salvation. You know, it reminds me of the words of a song once sang by Amy Grant, who said this, who once sung a song that said, angels watching over me. God has his angels watching over us. And uh, I, w I want to let you know that and just to encourage you in that. The scriptures clearly affirm us, affirm that. So let's thank God that he does send his angels to watch over us. Um, we worship God. We give him our praise. We give him our worship. 
but we also are aware that God does send his angels occasionally to deliver us and watch over us. Now, in our groups, I want us to think through this question. This is the question to ponder. The question is this. Have you ever experienced a situation where you felt you was protected by an angel? If not, what is your response to those who have experienced this? So have you ever experienced a situation where you felt you was protected by an angel? And if not, what, what is your response to those who have had such experiences? And the text is still this. I'd like you to read Psalm 91. Okay, so read the whole chapter, Psalm 91. And I'd like you to focus on verses 11 to 12. And from that text, I want you to think of this question. What does this, what does this text say about the role of angels and how does this make you feel? Well, thank you for spending this time listening. I uh, hope you have a great rest of the evening. Uh, don't forget, if you want to pop into our prayer meeting tonight, drop me an email at info at nbconline.org and I'll send you uh, the Zoom uh, access code for that. And it'll be great for you to be part of that. Hey, have a great rest of the week and uh, God bless you. Bye.